Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today, let's talk about exploding the chords in Cubase 14. So I've heard from quite a few people already that along with their excitement of getting the new Cubase 14, they've quickly discovered that the option to explode chords that we had in Cubase 13 has now been removed. That can be a bit of a shock, considering that everybody got excited once this option was revealed in a previous video. But there is a solution. I'm going to share it with you here. And along with learning and understanding the solution, this will also put you on a path to discovering some things even bigger and better as you go along. I want to begin by talking about how Cubase handles chords in general. What I mean by that is Cubase uses what's called adaptive voicings. If we take this MIDI part where I put some chords together, this first area over here is Cubase using that adaptive voicing. In this area over here, I put the chords in typically the way they would go in just automatically so I can show you the difference. I have watched many a tutorial by other producers that are pretty heavy into orchestration and they will go on and on about one of the things that makes the difference between a professional orchestration and one that kind of sounds amateur is the way that the notes kind of jump around as they move between the chords. If you look at these MIDI notes over here and I click on this first note, if I go to this next set of chords, you can see there's a big jump to this next note that's on top. This can happen when you put two chords together that are different and you're not giving too much thought to what notes these chords may have in common. And why would you? Because that's a complicated equation to think about in the first place. If I go over here on the left, these are the same two chords, but look what Cubase did. It saw that this note here and this note here on the next chord were exactly the same. So what it did when it wrote these chords in, it automatically put them right next to each other. And this is the whole concept behind this adaptive voicing. This is automatically built into Cubase. So when you put chords together, Cubase is automatically going to figure out what notes are in common as you move from one chord to the next. And it's automatically going to do what I was saying these other producers are continually trying to tell you to do. Cubase just does it automatically for you, and you really don't have to give much thought to it. Now I'm going to remove these chords. We can just get those out of view for a minute. So here we have four different chords. Let's listen to these really quick. When you look at these chords, these top notes basically in red, and then this one over here, these are the top notes of the chord. These are considered the soprano notes of this chord. These notes below it would be considered the alto notes of this chord. The notes below that would be the tenor notes, and then these bottom notes would be the bass notes. Again, Cubase automatically figures out these voicings for you, so you don't have to really think much about it. I'm just pointing it out so I can dissect it for you as we go along. If you go back to any track in the project view, when we come over to the tab that says chords, you have an option here that says follow the chord track. The first option in this list is off. When this is off, these notes may or may not be following this adaptive voicing. But if we go down this list and choose this option that says voicings, Cubase then analyzes these chords. And if I click on any particular note now, up on the info line, it's going to tell you what voice it is. In this case, it says soprano. And every one of these notes I click are going to say soprano. If I go down to the note below them, up on the info line, it's now going to say alto. And every one of these notes that are the second notes down are going to say alto. Next ones will say tenor. Finally, the bottom ones will say bass. Previously, when we had the explode chord option, it would look at these chords and it would take these soprano notes and these alto notes, the tenor and the bass, and split them into four different tracks and place them into your project. And now to do that, we will take advantage by going to the MIDI menu, coming down to an option that says logical editor, and then go to setup. This opens this logical editor, which has a large number of presets that allow us to do sophisticated MIDI functions beyond the typical things we would normally do. Hit the plus button to expand this list and explore all these various options. If we come down to the category that says musical content, and then move down this list, there's one in here that says extract alto. I'm gonna click on this option. We can see it's put a couple of things in here. You look at the second line, it says content variable is equal. And when we go over here to the second parameter, it says alto. If I click on this option, I can see now that any of these options of soprano, alto, tenor, bass, 
and even other options can be changed and selected here as I need them. And this is what we're going to use to build a new macro that will carry out our explode function and also help us to understand some of all of the great choices we have as we learn to use the logical editor in general. Now, in case you don't have this extract alto preset, let me run you through the steps of how to create that because the rest of this video is built on having this preset. Let's start right from scratch. If I hit the MIDI menu, I come down to where it says logical editor, hit setup. Let's remove everything that's in here currently. On the upper right, there's a button that says remove. I'm gonna click that. In the lower area, there's also a button that says remove. I'm gonna click that. Back in the upper area, I'm gonna hit the insert button twice. I want two lines here. And now I'm gonna create this preset. I go over to the first column where the brackets are, click there. I'm going to add one of these single brackets. I'm going to go to where the filter target is. I'm down hit the one that says type. It actually now says type is in that area. Under condition, I want to select and make sure it says equal. Under parameter one, I want to make sure it says note. Parameter two is blank. Go to the column that says bool. Make sure that says and by clicking on it. Now I come down to the next line. Click on this filter target. Come down to the option that says context variable. On the next one that says condition, set it to equal. Under parameter one. I'm going to come down to the option that says voice. Then under parameter two, I'm going to select alto. Come to the very end of the column where the brackets are. And come down and add another bracket there. At the very bottom, the drop down lists are. I'm going to make it say extract a track. And then I can save this. We're going to talk about that more in a second. We go back to our logical editor and we look at this preset for extracting the alto. You can see at the bottom, ultimately it's going to extract it to a track. We have all kinds of other options we could choose here even including lanes, and those are things you'll want to explore. Let's go ahead and run this operation where we extract this alto line to its own track. I hit apply, and just like that, if we look at our MIDI part, it's now created a separate track. If we click that track, you can see that it pulled that alto line out of that chord progression. If we click on any one of these notes, it continued to say alto in the info line, and it's now been isolated to its own track. And if we went back and highlighted this, and just simply went to every one of these that says alto and change it to whatever we want, for example, tenor or bass, and ran the same thing, it would ultimately do exactly what our explode the track command the way we want it to. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put all these manual operations into one single macro so we can just hit one key and perform this whole operation. So the first thing we're going to do is build a few of our own presets. Before we begin creating these presets, let's organize our location I'm going to hit the preset drop down, the minus if I need to close all these. There's an option that says show the user preset location. I'm going to click on that. That opens up a folder on my computer in my documents where Steinberg has all their presets. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder here and I'm going to call it the explode presets. I'm going to close that out. Then let's go ahead and create some presets. Just going to keep it fairly simple. Create the ones that extract these four voices, but you could take this much further if you wanted. You could set up options that delete your original track, move the tracks to different locations, many, many options, but let's just keep it simple to reflect what the original explode chord option originally did. We're going to start by changing the parameter to soprano instead of alto. And we'll click on our preset option. We're going to go to where it says save changes as a preset. Could just put it where it's at here. But I'm going to go up to the top and click where it says Logical Editor. And that allows me to see my folder that says the Explode Presets. And then I'm going to call this Extract Soprano and save it. Change it back to Alto. Go back up to the Presets. Save Changes as a Preset. And it remembers the folder that I was just in. Now it becomes a lot easier to finish from this point. I'll put in Extract Alto. We'll just continue this till we get all our voices. The Tenor. Preset. Save the Changes. Give it the right name. And then finally the bass. Again, we could just keep going with all of those options, but we're just going to stop with those. Save the changes. And then we're done. Close out the editor. Now we're going to go up to our edit, our key commands. We're going to come down to where it says a new macro. Click on that. Double click on it and rename it. Call it explode the chords. Hit enter. Let's go ahead and assign a key command to this. I'm going to click in the second column. I can type any key combination. And if it's already used, it'll tell me how it's being used. I'm going to go ahead and hit F11 for this. It's telling me this one's being used for devices, VST instruments. I don't really use it for that, so I'm going to go ahead and steal that command. That's ready to go. So now we need to add some commands to this macro. We go back up to our top list, and there's a category. If we come down this list, it says Process Logical Editor. Open that up. And as I come down my list, I can find everything that I created. The extract soprano, bass, tenor. I'm going to add each one of these one by one. 
First, I'll click on Extract Soprano, hit Add Command, go up and hit Extract Alto, add the command, extract the tenor, add the command, and then finally extract the bass and add the command. That's all there is. We don't have to hit any kind of Save button. Close this out. Because I've already assigned my key command, F11, I simply select my event, hit F11, and just like that, I now have my exploded chords, just like I did before in the score editor in Cubase 13. Now, let's briefly talk about some of the bugs I've encountered doing this. When I first completed this video, just like I demonstrated it for you, everything worked perfectly without any issue. On the other hand, if I close Cubase down and then reopen that project and select my chord event and hit my F11 shortcut key, sometimes I will run this and it won't behave as expected. And at this point, I haven't been able to figure out exactly why. What I discovered is if I go back up to my MIDI menu, come back down and open up the logical editor, as long as this window is open and then I run my command, it works perfectly every time. Why this window needs to be open, I'm not exactly sure. But having to open this window is a little bit of a headache, but there's a cure for that. If we close this down, go back up to our key commands, go to edit, key commands. In the search field, if I type in open, logical, I can see that there's a command that actually opens the logical editor. So if I click on that, back down to the explode the chords macro and say add the command, it now inserts that command into my macro. Now I need it to be the first thing, so I use these little arrows to move it up and now I have that, so I can close this down. And now if I hit my shortcut key, it opens up the logical editor and it runs the explode command perfectly. And this now happens every time with no problem. Now there may be another command that allows me to shut this window as well. I haven't got that far yet. I'll leave that to you. If I figure it out at some later point, I'll make a video on that for you. But for right now, it's no big deal for me to just click the X and close it out. Now I have my exploded tracks, with no problem at all. Another issue that's important to understand, over on the chord tab of your original track, you have to make sure that that is set to voicings. If that's not set to voicings, this doesn't work. One way to skip that step is if you always have your chords up on a chord track, and you select the track you want your chords to go to, if you go up to Project, come down to where it says Chord Track, you have an option that says Chords to MIDI, which again, I've set up a key command for, so I don't even have to come to this menu. And when you create that, this event will already set all these notes automatically to voicings and you can just skip all those extra steps. So take all those tips, put them to use, and I will see you next time. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase, and WaveLab, and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we learned the solution of how to replace the Explode the Chords command that we used to have in Cubase 13 to now use it in Cubase 14, began by talking about what adaptive voices are and how Cubase uses those. We then created a series of logical editor presets, combined all those into a macro, assigned a key command to that macro, and then we executed that macro, giving us not only the ability to now explode our chords, but also giving us a better understanding of using the logical editor and how we can use this to solve many of our repetitive tasks and simplify our workflow when we're creating our music productions in Cubase. And we will continue to explore all our creative options and the tools that we have available to us. As always, it's great to have you guys here. And I will see you on the next video.